Hello and welcome to Ministry Revealed. My name is Alan Dubray and it is March 27th, 2023. Welcome to the video I am calling the intro to the intro series. This video is meant to be shared with anyone and everyone we can get it to, to, to help people understand a mystery or the mysteries that are revealed within the Gospels and what these mysteries tell us about the is to come. What understanding do they give us about what is to come? We've been told all of our lives, the churches and the seminaries, they the same have told us that these differences, what some have called, millions have called discrepancies to discount the Gospels as being written by people and not spirit-led, you're going to witness here they are truly spirit-led and their purpose is revelation. We've been told through churches that these are our are, are perspectives, but as you're going to witness, they could not have been, they could not have been simply perspective because as you're going to see, they have different colors in them. They have different time frames in them. It is impossible that these things were just perspective because they're completely not in alignment with what the others are saying. And what you're going to witness here is that in this little taste to get you to go into the three-part series, which also is simply a taste of everything else revealed through five and a half years in this ministry, from the Gospels to, to the book of Revelation to Daniel to the creation story itself, from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, all begins with the revelation that we call who the Gospels are speaking to. You can begin to understand that with this video right here that I'm leading you into, this second video right here, and this third video right here. The first two are, thir are, are short 30-minute intros, and the last one is a bigger, longer video. It's all because of Matthew to help everyone understand how this was missed. What was it that caused all these things to be missed? And in part, it's because the Lord told Daniel that the book was sealed till the time of the end. Well, we're at this time of the end, and the is to come is at hand. So if you have ever wondered, if you have ever questioned what these differences are in these Gospels, we, we've accepted the Bible, right? We believe the Bible. But we could never fully understand what these discrepancies, what these differences were. Well, you're going to witness that here. And you could also, as you develop and as you pray over and ask you, as you ask for the Lord to open your understanding, to open what we call your end time eyes, you can then continue into our other videos. You can go to our Ministry Revealed website, which this is right here, and you can go to our book and it doesn't matter to me if you want to buy a paperback book. We've also made it available for free on PDF, free audio uh, download, as well as Spanish, Norwegian, German, and French, all for free downloads on PDF. All right. The other thing you could do is you can actually read the book right from the website. Okay. So it's not about buying the book. It's about making it accessible for everybody who wants the opportunity to dig deeper into what this revelation is all about, what these gospels are truly, truly telling us. You'll be able to find this video that you're watching right now in the intro link in the menu box on ministryrevealed.com, and it will replace this one. It'll push these three videos down, and it'll be right here. You'll also be able to find it at Ministry Revealed web's, uh, uh, YouTube channel, which you'll find on the homepage, it'll replace, it's the all because of Matthew. So you can always send people this link as well. My purpose, my desire, my goal is that we share this with as many people as we can to begin to, to open up this revelation to them and help them understand the coming time of the end. It's absolutely incredible once you see it. You're also gonna see me using a program called ESOR. I'm not affiliated with it, there's no... Uh, uh, compensation or anything. The purpose of this program for me is to be able to have the Strong's Concordance at my fingertips. And you're going to see why this is so important 
to understand what the words are saying. What is the context of what is being said? And the meaning of those words is going to blow your mind. This is why it's so important. So let me start right off the bat by getting into what it's all about. Okay. Many people like pastors and teachers and those who have gone to seminary and everybody have a very difficult time in what you're about to understand because it all deals with typologies. It is all about types and shadows. And most pastors, because they have never been taught on it, teachers, they have never been taught in these things because it wasn't easy. But when you begin to understand the Gospels and who they're speaking to, their revelation of their mysteries within them, everything else opens up. And you're going to see a, a, a continuous theme of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Matthew, Mark, Luke, pre, mid, post. You see? It's all in threes, and I'm telling you, it's going to excite you. It's so beautiful. But how do we know that we can truly believe and understand in these typologies? Well, Ecclesiastes 1.9 tells us. It says, the thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So it's saying the Old Testament, the was, and the New Testament, the is, which is from the beginning of Christ, until the moment of the end of days begins at the pre-trib, the was, the is, both help us and reveal to us the is to come. This is exactly what it's saying. And I'm going to help you here and now begin to understand these differences, and it will unlock. So be sure to pray. Ask the Lord to re have his spirit reveal to you the understanding, to be able to follow it and diligently seek and search it out for yourself in what we call end time eyes watch this let me show you just a, a two or three incredible ones within the gospels in luke 23 before as jesus is going to the cross it says they arrayed him in a gorgeous robe it means bright clear gorgeous radiant white when we go to mark in mark's gospel it says that jesus was arrayed in purple when we go to matthew it says that jesus was arrayed in scarlet do you know how many pastors we've asked to see if they if they knew what this was most i, I think every single one that i have heard back from not a single one realized that there were actually different colors that had been given through the gospels and why is that because everybody's focus is always matthew and Mark and Luke in the Synoptic Gospels are just looked at as little add-ons. You see, this is the mystery of who they're speaking to and what their portions are in relation to the is to come. This is a mystery that reveals the is to come. If you'll notice, as you have read the, the tribulation or the revelation, you'll notice that the tribulation colors are what? Purple and scarlet that the woman was dressed in, the harlot of Babylon, right? Purple and scarlet, but not white. Who wears white? A bride, right? A bride. Well, watch this. Let me show you another beautiful one. In Luke chapter 23, the last words Jesus says on the cross is, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Right? Just, Father, receive me. Okay? And he's gone. Right? Well, eventually he's gone. What do we get in Mark and in Matthew? This is why you're, begin, you're going to begin to understand why it's so important to have the Strong's Concordance at your fingertips. It says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the word forsaken means to leave behind. Was Jesus believing he was about to be left behind? Absolutely not. Well, guess what? It also says the same thing in Matthew's gospel. He says the exact same thing. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which means to leave behind. Did Jesus believe he was being left behind? Not at all. It was prophetic. It was prophetic, brothers and sisters. This is what this revelation is all about. Let me give you another 
incredible little detailed one. If you go to the end of each gospel of the synoptic gospel, starting in Luke, you see that at the end of it, Jesus is carried up into heaven. The word carried up means to take up or carry up and so forth. When you go to Mark, you see, if they were all the same, you would think it would be the same storyline, right? What does it say in Mark? He was received up. And the one from Luke is the Greek word 399, which means to carry. And the one in Mark is the Greek word 353, which means to receive. Why the differences? Well, let me show you what happens when you get to Matthew in Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus doesn't go anywhere. He says, all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. There's no longer preaching. It's only teaching. And what does he tell them to do? He commands them to go out and teach his ways. And what does he say? That he's with them until the end of the world. Isn't that fascinating? He doesn't go anywhere. What is the prophetic significance of him saying he's here till the end of the world. This is because he is now returned feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of tribulation and all power in heaven and in earth are given to him and he's here till the end of the world at the end of the millennial reign. You see what's happening? A pre in Luke, a mid in Mark, a post in Matthew. What else did we see? We saw a taking, a taking, right? One being a carry, one being a received and the third him coming, him remaining. Well, let me show you the revelation of this. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in the typology of what Paul is talking about. He is speaking as if now here coming the third time. Listen to what he says, starting in verse two. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. In the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. Such as one, which means like like one caught up. The word caught up, everybody likes to see this one, is the harpazo, which means rapture, which means to pluck, to seize by force, is the English equivalent for rapture. The Greek is harpazo. So it's not the exact rapture one that everybody likes to talk about. It's like a rapture. And this like a rapture, first one, they're going to the third heaven. This is the Luke, the gorgeous white robe. This is the one carried up. And then listen to what he says for the second one. I knew a man, I'm sorry, I knew such a man. So now this one, which is the like, means it's not like the same ones that were in Christ, but they're, they're, they're kind of, right? But they weren't as in Christ as the other ones were. And what happens to this group? Out of the body, in the body, I cannot tell. And it says how he was caught up. This one is the rapture that everybody talks about. This one is the great multitude rapture of Revelation chapter 7 between the 6th and 7th seal. Where does this group go? To paradise. This is the mark received up. And so what is Paul saying being here above 14 years ago? Well, he's speaking as if he's what? Now come the third time. The third time I am ready to come to you. I will not be burdensome to you. I do not seek yours, but you. What is he saying? Now I'm coming. The typology is like Christ coming feet down on the Mount of Olives. This is all riddled throughout the Old Testament as well. You're going to see this 14 years all over the place. Let me give you an example here with the story of the ark in Revelation chapter 8. After the dove is sent out, and then goes back to the ark, we see a typology of days as years. And you're going to see this happen a lot within scripture. You may have even heard certain pastors talk about a typology that days have a reference to years in the end of days. Well, we see here that the dove is brought back into the ark, and then it says it stayed yet seven other days. When it goes out again, it says that there was an olive leaf plucked off in the dove's mouth. Well, this olive leaf also means a branch. And it was what? Plucked off. What did the word harpazo mean? Right? What was the word for harpazo? 
to pluck. You see, those that are grafted in, the Gentiles grafted in, now that branch is being plucked off. Seventh year of seals. And then what happens? Then the dove goes and stays yet seven more days, 14 total years. And when these 14 years are done, the dove never returns again. And then you have the ark story as if the 600 years, first year, month, and day is like the 6,000th year. It's, it's incredible. And look at this in Genesis chapter 8, verse 10. You would think these two words for stayed would be the same. Yet the second one literally means to wait and be patient. That's what we would expect they would mean. However, look at what the definition of the first one actually is. Pain, travail, wound, sorrow, much pain. It's the beginning of tribulation. Isn't that wild? Let me show you another one. Check this out with Abraham. Abraham ends up having a son, Ishmael, with Hagar. How old was Abraham? He was 86 years old when he had Ishmael. Go to uh, Genesis 17. When Abraham is 99 years old, okay, 13 years have passed, the Lord God makes a covenant with Abraham and his household and so forth. How old is Abraham at the covenant? Like we saw, 99 years old, and Ishmael was 13 years old. When does the promise come? When does the Lord return feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of trumpets? Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 21. We then see Abraham is 100 years old when the promise of Isaac comes 14 years later. I can go through this and show you scripture after scripture after scripture. It is absolutely everywhere. All right. So how did this all get missed? What, what happened? Remember, this is just a taste. As you come, <clears throat> excuse me, and then go into this intro video, this intro video, and then come down into this one and understand that all of this happened because we've been taught from a foundation in the gospel of Matthew, everything will begin to open up to you. And these three intro videos in this series are still also only the beginning. You see, what has happened is because all of our foundation within the Gospels has come from Matthew, that all we have seen and all that we have been taught comes from a perspective of Judah, from the house of Judah, from the Jews. Because Matthew, as most people know, is written to the Jews. But it was never understood who Mark was written to or who Luke was written to in the Synoptic Gospels. And what you're going to understand is that Luke is written to those in Christ, spirit-filled people. They are the, the bride of Christ portion. They are the first fruits of a harvest field. The great multitude rapture that happens in the seventh year of seals is the main harvest of a harvest field. And your corners and gleanings are the Matthew portion, your pre your mid and your post. And when everything we have learned has come from a foundation in Matthew, it caused all of this confusion when seeing scriptures that told us about pre, that showed us about mid, that showed us about post. It has caused so much division within the churches. You're about to witness that the reason we have not seen it is one, Probably because, as, he, the, as the Lord told Daniel in, in chapter 12, I believe verse 4, the reason is because it was sealed up for the time of the end. And in these five and a half years since this has been revealed to me, I have been teaching it and teaching it and expounding on it more and more and more for five and a half years. That we're now able to take it from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation and clearly show these differences within the Gospels are all speaking to different periods of time to different people in the prophetic is to come. Luke is the pre-trib bride of Christ. The Mark group is, is the world, the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel. Those who aren't prepared in Christ, they're not watching, they're not praying, they're not diligent. And then Matthew is to the house of Judah or the Jews. And so when we've been told that that, there, that there's only seven years of tribulation 
and that everybody is going first in the rapture, what they're really seeing is as if they're at the end of Mark's gospel, which is the mid-trib rapture of the great multitude, and it leaves the seven years of trumpets for the house of Judah, at which point the Lord will have come, defeated their enemies, and the rebuilding of the city and the streets and the temple will begin. What has been missed is the first seven years, at which point the Jews will be removed from the land. The Lord will make his land to rest for the Sabbaths it did not rest for, as he told them it should in Leviticus chapter 26. He will remove them from the land for the first seven years while seals tribulation breaks out across the earth. And at the end of Mark's portion of seals, the world portion of seals, the great multitude rapture will happen. And the seven years of trumpets with the rebuilding of the temple will take place. And the seven years of trumpets will begin. And at the end of trumpets, the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, just as the end of Matthew said, and he will remain till the end of the world for the entirety of the millennial reign. Brothers and sisters, I was hoping I could do this video even shorter, but there is so much detail that I, I there had to be just a little bit more added in. I needed this time. So I pray it blesses you. I pray it gets you to, to look further into these things and all you need to do is scroll down below this video you're watching here and watch these next three videos to begin to understand more. And then from there, go and read the book. Download the book, read chapter one, read chapter two, and then go to the one on It's All Because of Matthew and understand for yourself that all these things are true and that we have been able to reveal it through the Gospels in dozens upon dozens and dozens of these differences within the Gospels. I pray it blesses you. I pray the Spirit will come upon you and give you these end time eyes. God bless you all. God bless your families. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.